Byron, thank you for your time. Let's begin by just perhaps deconstruct this whole idea of smart cities. What are they? Yeah, I think the definition of a, a smart city has developed over the years as being a city that utilizes digital sensors and data collection uh, to manage uh, cities and how they deliver services to their citizens. Right. Right? The big change really is that digital component. I think always city planners used information to design streets, to design sewage pipes and water systems. Now I think a lot of that can be done much more real time uh, using digital information collected from citizens, their devices, assets, et cetera. Um, and really the idea being a city can become much more sustainable and more efficient in how it manages its resources. Do we have any examples of cities around the world that have been able to develop to this concept of a smart city that we can use as a, uh, perhaps examples? Yeah, I think there's good examples of maybe specific areas that you can see the potential. Uh, and certainly globally, um, cities like Singapore, uh, maybe Dubai, uh, have really started to develop uh, things that ease congestion, uh, clean up public areas, uh, parking, uh, monitoring of public transportation. Um, all of these things are ongoing and are inherently part of that city's infrastructure, so to speak. I think in Africa, I think you're seeing uh, what people might call satellite cities that are outside the main metropolitan uh, city center that is already congested and is quite difficult to maybe revolutionize in this way. Uh, and you're seeing that happening, obviously, in uh, just outside of Nairobi, uh, in, in Kanza. Um, you've got that here in South Africa, maybe a waterfall. So you see a minor, kind of a little bit of a, a satellite city that is being created from the ground up with the intention of everything being very digital. And and in terms of infrastructure that's built so that there's activity between all houses, the yeah. houses and the community compounds, from security to parking to waste services to everything like that. And what difference has that made in terms of the delivery of services for those people who are living in those cities? I'm certainly going to take a, uh, a, a walk around around waterfalls and, and try and see what kind of things that you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would like to take that same walk. Uh, yeah, I think it's still a work in progress, but mm. I think you can see, and as I said, there's some examples where you see interesting things where you have an app on a phone uh, in, in Singapore, where if you're looking for a parking space, a public, even a public government run parking space on the street, the app will tell you where to find that parking space. Mm -hmm. So it saves you time from driving around in that city sure. looking for a parking space. And obviously when you get to that parking, parking space, you can actually pay with the app as well. So I think that those kind of things you see in practice and you think, hmm, you know, that really can start to uh, improve things. I think some of the new cities, you know, it's a question really will they deliver what they promise? And certainly they are a bit different in the sense that they're built specifically to showcase uh, kind of what the digital uh, future can contain. Yeah. Uh, but I have not been to, to, to Smart City, to Waterfall to have a look around. <laughs> indeed, indeed, indeed. And where do you guys come in? Yeah, Seacom, we're actually the, the first private uh, cable system. That's a fiber optic cable system that connects Africa to Europe. Um, so we are really the big transmission backbone uh, for really all the connectivity that happens between Africa and Europe and the United States uh, and Asia to a lesser extent, but also within the region. So African, we connect uh, Kenya to Tanzania to Mozambique to South Africa, and then we go up the West Coast uh, as well. Mm -hmm. So our cable system kind of connects Africa to the world, and it connects Africa regional markets to other regional African markets. Uh, now, we have landed the cable and extended the cable into key metropolitan city centers uh, and are now taking the next step, which is to drive that data connectivity into the hearts of cities where customers want to use that data capability. Mm -hmm. So everything we do is pretty much over fiber optic cables, uh, whether that's from Johannesburg all the way up to Paris or whether that's locally within Johannesburg or, or Nairobi or Dar es Salaam. Yeah. I don't know uh, to what extent you pay attention to the uh, projections of population growth in Africa, but uh, I have been reading quite a bit around it. And uh, uh, one report I saw from UNICEF says by 2100, uh, half of the world's children, and I want to emphasize that, 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 that number, half of the world's children under 18 are going to be 
African. That gives you a sense of the size of the population growth that we're seeing across the African continent. And by 2050, the population of Africa will have doubled. 2.5 billion people we're talking about. So there's a greater scope for the numbers that are coming through into the system. And I want to talk to you a little bit about capacity that you guys are building and your ability to be able to cope with the kind of demands for those kind of services that will be coming through because of that huge population growth. Are you investing more? Uh, yes, we are. And I think uh, as part of that population growth, which you're also having uh, happen is that there's a massive trend toward urbanization. Mm -hmm. So currently today, I think Africa is about 40% uh, urbanized, whereas the U.S. is about 80% urbanized. I think that Africa is also not only is the population going to grow, mm -hmm. but it's going to move uh, more into cities. And I think when you see that happening, I think the challenge is not only to get them the data connectivity to where consumers want to use it and businesses want to use it, but also how that data connectivity can be used to make those cities more efficient uh, and provide better living conditions, better health conditions uh, mm -hmm. for the populations that live in those cities. So we are continuing to upgrade our fiber optic cables. We add electronics that being more and more uh, international subsea capacity so that we connect all of the various operators in markets in Africa to the rest of the world. Yeah. We have just increased our cable capacity to 2.5 terabytes. When we started uh, back in the day, we lit at 80 gigabytes. So we've added a huge amount of capacity and we continue to add more and more of that capacity. But it is a challenge to get the capacity or that data connectivity to where it can be utilized. So I think the challenge right now in Africa is really getting from the coastline right. into the key metropolitan centers and then into an office or a school or a hospital. Uh, and that's a, a, an investment area that we are focusing on now, which is to get that digital connectivity to where the customers and the users can use it. Yeah. How much of that capacity are you using at the moment? Yeah, we are running live with customers at about one terabyte today on the Seacom cable system. Okay. So most, you know, we do an upgrade and we do an upgrade depending on how fast that upgrade needs to be done. We can add another 500 gig. That's usually our general increment of upgrade. Uh, in a matter of a few months. So we just wait until as that's utilized, we'll actually invest more and light more capacity. Okay. Let's talk about the partnerships uh, that are, are, are supposed to be formed here in order to be able for us uh, to realize uh, uh, these things that we're talking about. Uh, obviously, you have on the one hand people like mm -hmm. yourselves, then you've got uh, the uh, city planners and of course the national planners. Uh, in terms of uh, getting all those uh, kind of partners together, uh, tell me how willing how easy has it been to bring in all those players to sit together and plan the kind of things that we are seeing around waterfall yeah i think a lot of those are really public and and private uh, partnerships right? i think certainly in south africa we see a healthy uh regulation regime that allows private companies to operate efficiently and effectively uh obviously when you're constructing fiber, you need to deal with uh, way leaves under roads uh, and construction alongside roads. Um, so it is very much, I would say, private driven, but supported by uh, the government. So, and I think that that's a very important aspect of what's happening, because obviously you can't get out of waterfall, which is a private estate. Yeah. Uh, you need to manage the network beyond uh, the borders of waterfall into the rest of the city and into the rest of Africa. For the cities, what are the benefits? I mean, we know obviously having uh, systems that manage these things while you are doing other work is great, but what are the bigger, broader benefits for them being able to uh, uh, get this kind of projects off, off on the ground and running? Yeah, I think, again, we at CECOM, we provide the underlying infrastructure and the data platform, if you will, uh, that a lot of things can happen over. So I think, you know, as cities look at even things like traffic lights and road congestion uh, or, or monitoring that and how do you adjust uh, traffic lights or even overhead lights for security. Um, really, people talk about the Internet of Things and the ability to track where people are. Uh, is there a car at that traffic light? Could you shift that traffic light to ease congestion flow? So I think, you know, if you look at waste and waste collection and the timing of it and the accumulation of it, how you could manage it better by having sensors and that data information on hand so that you could, as a, uh, a city planner, change how you do things or improve how you do things yeah. or fix immediate problems. Uh, so, I mean, I think from security to health 
to waste management, to water, to power, to traffic. Um, there's so many platforms that now be enabled uh, that improve citizens' lives. Really.